So let me do a quick live uh, demo related on the Microsoft 365 developer program. How do you sign up and what's available? And just to recap, AKMS M365 slash dev program uh, is the one AKMS address to get there. There's actually multiple one of, one of them. Um, it's quite actually quite typical for us and in Microsoft, we are creating a lot of AKMS addresses, but that's one of the AKMS addresses to get there. Now, let me actually show a live demo on what happens when you actually get there. I think this one is the one. And let's see how this goes. So first of all, uh, what I've done here is that I actually already gone to the AKMS address, and that means that you will be redirected to the developer.microsoft.com slash uh, the language and then Microsoft 365 and dev program. And from here, you can then start to join now uh, functionality. I already signed in, so I'm signed into the here using a Microsoft, uh, Microsoft, Microsoft account, so one of the sample accounts which we're using. Um, it is saying Office 365 developers, so it's relatively old accounts uh, because we're nowadays Microsoft 365 developers, right? Now, the key point of the, of the Microsoft 365 developer program is that you will get a free developer instant sandbox. So uh, you will get it immediately uh, and it will have example data and structures inside of it. And we're going to walk through the process in a second. Um, there's sample data max, including Microsoft Teams, and there's also sample data packs for SharePoint side. So uh, there's a pre-existing content in that tenant already, uh, including people uh, and accounts. So there's, uh, I think it's 19 uh, or 25 accounts, uh, which are actually available immediately in that tenant. Um, so, and they're different persons, um, and that's going to help on, for example, creating uh, example content, creating uh, sharing information with some of the other accounts in a tenant and all of that stuff. So it's kind of a for demo usage as well. You can access experts, uh, so there's a, a community, you will get uh, emails out of the, the news and all of that stuff, and then personal recommendations as well. But the, really the key here is for doubt, no doubt, is the free Microsoft 365 E5 tenant. Um, I actually briefly read uh, a quick update on this one. If you have an old developer tenant, which is E3, uh, which was the case uh, previously, you can actually subscribe to a new uh, subscription, uh, so you can create an alternative tenant and then leave the old one behind and then move to the new one. There's unfortunately no in-place upgrade of an existing Microsoft 365 E3 developer tenant, which was the old model to this E5 tenant model. Um, but that's really, really cool. So let's actually walk this through uh, the process. So what does it mean in practice? And let's see if this works. Now, if I'm not able to walk this through, we're going to cut this with this part, obviously, from the end <laughs> end recording. So this is the only moment you will see this live because I haven't actually tested this. So let's see how this goes. Okay, so we are uh, signing into the Microsoft 365 developer tenant. And like I said, I've already signed in with a uh, one random account, uh, which we've been using a, in the past. And I'm going to sign in in here. Uh, let me go and sign myself. For example, I'm located right now in uh, Finland. So if I can actually just use the alphabets, it is really, really hard. Um, and I can say that I'm from Microsoft, language preference is English, uh, I do accept and uh, sure, I'm interested in all of the, the emails and all of that stuff. And uh, what is my primary focus as a developer? Let me zoom in a bit so you can actually see all of the different questions. Doesn't really matter. This is more categorization of the people who are registering to the program. So we understand what is our main audience in the Microsoft 365 platform. Um, but um, I don't personally do this uh, anymore, but I used to do custom solution for my customers. And um, now it's a bit of a different story. Um, what are the areas Microsoft 365 development you're interested in? This will, will then uh, indicate uh, what is visible in the dashboard. Uh, so kind of a more visible for you to access the information. Um, so uh, sure, SharePoint framework, Craft, Teams, uh, not that much. Power Platform is super interesting. Let's, let's save that one as well. So and let's save it. And there we go. So. Now we have two different options uh, for setting up our Microsoft 365 as sandbox, as, as an instant sandbox with an existing uh, content and um, information or structures which are available. And this is basically ready, already pre-provisioned uh, tenant, which is immediately available for me to take advantage, or alternatively configurable sandbox, uh, which means that I'm going to enable the, the bits and pieces one step at a time as needed. As we want to uh, as we are talking about the instant sandbox, we are actually going to choose that one now. So it will have users, mails, and events, uh, and content in there, and Microsoft Teams content and SharePoint content in that tenant as well. So let's actually do that. 
Um, it's going to ask me where it's going to be provisioned, and these are the four different options. Uh, technically, it's already provisioned. It's going to be just associated to you. Um, I'm located in Finland, so I'm going to take the Ireland uh, admin username. Now, this is getting a bit tricky. Uh, how would I actually do this uh, without showing my app username <laughs> with all of you? Uh, let me do it this in a way, and uh, that uh, let me actually take this one uh, and move it in this screen. So I'm going to actually do this quickly. Uh, as a read through and I'm writing this in a different screen um, so just that I don't uh, share the information with you and I will continue. Now the next piece um, is then asking a phone number um, and again, I'm going to move this to another uh, screen, so we're, we're not going to capture my phone number because, well, I don't answer my phone anymore nowadays. Who uses phone in a way for communication channel? But this is basically for security reasons, and it also double checks that um, how many tenants are being registered to an individual phone number. There's some some level of logic behind of the scenes as well. Now, in my case, uh, let me do this in another screen again. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to fill in my phone number. And it's going to send a code to my phone number. And let's see if it actually works. There was some uh, let's level of a uh, uh, problems uh, in this. And, and let me actually show you. And then, 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 if I can solve this, there has been some, let's say, uh, challenges related on the country codes, um, but I was able to crack it and it's, it is actually sending me the code and my code is coming in my mobile uh, right now. So I can actually register this uh, and uh, set up. So let's see if that actually moves forward. I will move it in here. And that's basically now set up for me to use. So what I did there uh, is that I provided my phone number um, and I provided my uh, country code. But um, there seems to be a bit of uh, um, things which we need to adjust on that uh, registration. Uh, so even though I selected my country code from the drop down, I was still forced to do 00358 um, as a prefix for my phone number. So it's a bit of a misleading uh, way of doing things. Now, what we basically have here now uh, is our tenant, which is ready to be used, um, and we can actually see that the tenant is available uh, with that unique name, and it is actually uh, with that unique administrator uh, address as well. Now, let's do this in a way, uh, because we do have time. I'm going to actually try to uh, do this in a uh, interestingly way. So let me create a new profile for me. Uh, I'm going to add a new profile uh, to a browser. And I'm going to leave my uh, registration uh, window on the left, and I'm going to actually use that information on the right side. So I'm going to sign into the, the actual uh, location. So let me go to, let's see, where would I actually go? Uh, Office.com is if I register, well, I could actually go in here and do SharePoint.com. That's probably the easiest way to go to the registration uh, number. Uh, one of the interesting thing in Edge is why would I do this? Why would I create a new profile and then it's using my work profile? No, thank you. I don't want to do that. I want to sign into the Microsoft 365 and I'm going to sign in using that administ administrator number, which I gave, or administrator name, which I gave as part of the registration and the, the program. And next, and then I'm going to write my uh, password over there. And let's see if I was able to actually get it right. And uh there's some security things no skip for now 14 days until this is required okay so that's that's cool stay signed in uh in this case i can actually do that uh, because i created a new profile in my edge uh, which is the easiest way to do the isolation so this way i'm now in the tenant and we can actually see some example extracting content here uh, and let's see uh, i'm using that account in the new tenant that didn't take too long right so that was a quite uh, simple thing to do and uh, the only only the most uh, complex thing was to fill in my phone number so i'm going to go to teams.microsoft.com i'm going to skip for now I'm um, not going to focus on the security uh, improvements there, um, and I'm going to go to the mobile. And we should see some example structures and content in this tenant already. 
And here we go. And yes, 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 let's go. And I'm not going to actually, I'm not interested in shifts. I'm actually more interested in teams. And we can actually see some example structures already in the available. So different teams, different channels, not too much content in them, but there's some level of AA structures available. And um, there's example uh, accounts already chatting uh, in the team as well. Um, you can actually make that happen as well, which is pretty, pretty cool. And then uh, if I go in here and let's actually double check the situation also from admin. No, I do not want to change to my pro, uh, actual work account. Just making sure, asking 25 times, you know. Uh, and then I'm going to go to the SharePoint side of the house just to show that there are some example structures available. No, no, I do not want and checkbox now there's on and skip that one. Dun, dun, dun. And let me go to the active sites and we can actually see that there's some example content uh, immediately available uh, in this site as well. So if I now go to the US sales or if I open up a Mark 9 project or if we open up a retail, uh, we should actually see some example structures and content available. Um, at least there's site collections available in this. Um, I'm just looking into there isn't actually a significant amount of example structures available in the sites, but again, we have existing content available, existing accounts, existing users, and all of that available in the tenant to take advantage. So that's actually really, really cool. Now, there. Let's let's see if we can. Uh, I'm going to answer a few of the questions. How does the admin side play in this scenario? Um, technically, so just to clarify on that one, um, this is completely isolated uh, uh, tenant which has been assigned for me. So this one would be my normal, let's say, a Microsoft account, uh, my Hotmail account, my Outlook account, whatever you use for uh, identifying with Microsoft, and you have signed in uh, or registered in the developer program using that one. But this one here is the information. Uh, around this tenant which was signed in and that is basically completely isolated tenant assigned for my admin account uh, which registered to the developer program. So this is completely isolated um, and using its own identities as well. Now a uh, good question uh, on the so how would I get an Azure tenant back in, back in the site? Uh, you would actually go uh, from the admin center. So if we go back in the admin center, I can actually go back in here and, and we have the admin centers, including Active Directory, Azure Active Directory available in here as well. So that is the tenant or Azure AD behind of the scenes. Now on the app catalog, um, unless I'm completely mistaken, if I remember correctly, unfortunately the SharePoint app catalog isn't actually created by default. Uh, it is, however, something which gets created in a matter of seconds nowadays. So if I go to apps, live demos are always good. Um, so uh, if I click app catalog, uh, it ask, it's going to ask me that do I want to create it? <laughs> Do I want to create it automatically uh, within a minute or do I want to create it uh, on an alternative option which will take 30 minutes? Uh, yeah, I'm going to choose the one minute option and clicking OK. And that's actually going to start the creation of the app catalog. It is less than one minute um, and the app catalog is available because technically already at this point, after a few seconds, uh, if I go back in active sites uh, and refresh, uh, we should see the apps uh, app catalog pretty soon available in the sites because the provisioning is, is based on the new model. We can actually see that the app catalog is already created and there is my app for SharePoint and it's completely functioning site. Not sure if it's actually yet visible in here. Again, there's some certain level of caching as well. No, it's not yet. Okay, that's fine. Now, but that's kind of a quick uh, uh, a clarification. What do you get when you register to the Microsoft 365 uh, admin? Uh, Microsoft 365 uh, talking is hard. Microsoft 365 developer program. Um, and maybe a side, uh, quick side point here because Sydney is asking that, uh, how does this work? Uh, these are site design site scripts. Um, I can browse different templates which are available. You can introduce your own templates and I can select one of these to be and then apply it to my a uh, site. So this is based on the site script and site design technology. Nowadays it's renamed to be called site template again. 
I can apply the template and then that's going to be applied on top of the existing site. So behind of the scenes is always the same SharePoint site. And now we're heading towards a direction where it is a SharePoint site, the underlying template doesn't matter because we adjust the SharePoint experience as it is. But again, good way of getting example content in and then all of this is getting then indexed by Microsoft Search in this tenant and I can start building cool experiences and embedding Viva connection directly in Teams and all of that stuff. Um, maybe one thing to call out here, uh, there are certain, let's say, uh, how would I put it, uh, not inconsistencies, but uh, certain things. So something like, um, I'm personally, I don't quite understand why did we decide to have the activities in the fourth one, not the first one, which is it by default, but you can of course shuffle all of that stuff uh, in this tenant uh, as you wish. The tenant will automatically renew uh, after a is 120 days. Uh, we can actually see that in here. So now if I extend this one, uh, does it already show that? No, it, oh, there we go, 90 days left. It actually shows that. So in 90 days, it's gonna uh, basically do a recap of have you used it for developer purposes or not? And then it's gonna renew automatically if needed. So pretty cool stuff. And most likely we'll do a quick recap on the developer program uh, in the next year. Uh, I think that's fine. Uh, so let's make, the, let's make sure that the people who actually own this are present in the call and they can answer on the questions as well. But that's pretty much it uh, for the developer program. Really, really cool stuff. And, and of course, in this admin uh, dashboard, um, where you don't necessarily go too often, but you can, of course, uh, get more information. You can subscribe to different emails and all of that stuff as well. So uh, there is certain level of settings in here. Most of your time most likely will be happening in that tenant, which we just created. Good. Uh, what happens after the 90 days? As long as you renew, uh, use it for developer purposes, it's going to automatically renew and you will get the same tenant. So it's basically going to extend that tenant uh, in every single 90 days. So really, really cool stuff. The developer program, AKMS M365 Dev Program, is the one URL to get there as well. There's a few different AKMS addresses to do that. Uh, please sign up. Uh, it is free, doesn't cost you anything, and it's going to renew that based on your selection. Thank you.